been doing some the pilot areas for the 375 per delivery as opposed to the mm -hmm. hourly rate. We have. Can yes. you, uh, ha, ha, are you monitoring whether people who are on that pilot are meeting either the, the living wage or indeed the minimum wage at all hours in which they're doing shifts? Our riders earn on average across all of the UK £9.50. Those that move to the new pilot earn on average £10.60. The promise was um, up to £16 an hour. We're currently seeing people do anywhere from zero to four drops an hour, with the average being more about like five to seven pounds an hour. So a drop is four pounds. Um, after costs, it ends up being five to seven pounds an hour. The lowest figure we've seen after costs is one pound eighty nine an hour. Done sixteen pounds an hour, maybe a couple of times every, maybe a couple of times every nine months, <laughs> in for one hour. That's why we've all came together and built the union to try yeah. and attack back at them and go, no, it should be fair for everyone, no matter who you are. We've got a letter for you about um, the conditions that the riders face to work for you every night. And could you sign our petition to get things changed so we can earn a living wage? Of course. Thanks, man. Cheers, man. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Today I was out from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock and I didn't pick up one order. At the moment I do Monday all the way through to Sunday, seven days a week. Averagely I normally come out about 12 o'clock until about 10 o'clock at night. Some nights I'll come out at five o'clock at night and then do until 10 and miss the lunchtime. But I'm struggling at the moment for that two weeks, even though I'm doing seven days a week over those two weeks to clear 500 pound. My last pay was 420 pound. That's for 14 days. I have a little picture of my little boy on my phone and that, that's what drives me to stay out during the wet weathers. This is now my full-time job and I do this seven days a week and it's killing me. 69 to 74 hours every seven days. Less than 400 pounds every two weeks. Delivery when you sign your contract say it's 1.5 miles from <laughs> the restaurant to the customer's house and we all know and it's not. That <laughs> it's not. It's like if they take the map out and yeah. draw a straight line from here to there to the customer's house and go, yeah, you can ride over people's roofs. Yeah, you can cycle <laughs> up walls. It's ridiculous. I had a delivery a couple of months back that I argued with them because it was three miles long. And I argued for a double pay because it's double what my contract states. They wouldn't pay it. Signing the petition. <laughs> Thank you so much. You. That means so much. Thank you. Like on your thing. Yeah. Like the costs are not substantial. You need to buy a bike, and that's it. We provide our own kit, bike maintenance. They charge you £150 for a polystyrene box, a waterproof jacket that is that splash is proof, more splash proof than anything. We work with temperature of minus two, minus three, and with that jacket was so cold. They won't give you any of the lycra long leggings, you have to go and buy them yeah. yourself. Help us out in things we need, like a hot drink on a winter's evening, working eight hours. I think we get one free hot drink a month. Just recently, because I haven't been able to afford my data for my phone, I haven't been able to work for a week. 
there's plenty of riders out there that don't get provided with a crash helmet. Lights, I'm always buying, so I have to buy cheap lights because I'm not earning enough money to get a decent set of lights. The ones they give you are those cheap lights. <laughs> the ones they give you are, are terrible. Worse than than you, really power shop you have to like really squint bad. to see you, them down You're there. better off going down to Poundland and getting yourself yeah. a cheap set of lights Honestly, out of there than getting these. <laughs> so I'm saying you the might as well hold a lighter up while you're cycling. <laughs> Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Living wage! Now! Listen, if you could give that to the area manager and just say we would ask them to reconsider and yeah. support the riders. Okay. Okay. Yeah? Thank Take you. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you very much. get sick like employed or unemployed people. In my view, you need to look at their wages properly. They are employed by you, they are no longer self-employed. Okay, now she insurance. Yeah. I haven't actually cycled for delivery since the 1st of January. I've been injured. They're calling it potential patella tendonitis, which is something I got from cycling for Deliveroo. Took a little period off over Christmas, then went back straight into a shift, which lasted about nine hours. Now, nine hours of cycling is nothing to me. Usually you do that twice a week sometimes, but it obviously did something to my tendons behind my right kneecap. I woke up the next day and I was just stiff with agony and haven't been able to go back to cycling since then at all. I was doing it full time. I mean, that was my main source of income. I'm an employee, I know it's not the official title, but you know, I'm making money for a company. Surely that would cover me for at least a little bit of time, you know, while I'm out for the count. I have your same problem with my knees, uh, leg bends, and uh, yeah, I'm not working at the moment. There's no support or training in terms of how to be aware and you sort of increase your safety as a lone worker. My colleagues were attacked on the street for food, stealing bike. To me, it would be a very important thing to educate the riders on that safety, but they just set you out and they go, start working. What do we want? Anyway! When do we want it? They're working a full week for you. Why should taxpayers pick up the bill um, for core employees? Even the individuals working significant hours week to week still have flexibility that you wouldn't have as an employee. If you don't show up to work, then there is no repercussion for that. When you have job, you have to take that job because it's necessary. It's not a, a choice. You have to. You have to, to serve on that period is busy. So it's a paradox because this is not flexibility. Nobody is penalised for not turning up when we'd like them to turn up. There is no exertion of control on those individuals. This unassignment um, matrix which you have, which is the percentage of orders you actually do and the percentage yeah. you're assigned from. And whenever they, you ring up to be unassigned from something, they're like, this will affect your unassignment matrix. Mm -hmm. Like, it's this kind of implicit yes. threat of potential action. They don't come out and say, well, you've got to do this, otherwise, you know, we're going to take action. They just imply it. But then you don't see any flexibility at all, except on your side. The flexibility is... I mean, you're not paying national insurance. You're not covering from other costs, which taxpayers will have to actually pick up. I mean, it's a marvellous model if you can get away with it, isn't it? We're more than happy to help you all, okay? I'm going to show you to the manager anyway, guys. Goodbye. All the best. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> We offer the 
these guys the ability to log in whenever they like for whatever duration they like. If you think of a, a typical hourly model, you would cap the number of workers working in a given hour to ensure that you don't have too much labor for the amount of demand that you have. That is highly restrictive for individuals in our fleet that are using this to supplement additional income streams. It became apparent around sort of November. There was a lot of us cyclists on the road. There were so many. There would be three, four, five new faces every day. Recent weeks, between Monday and Thursday particularly, cyclists have found that orders have almost completely dried up. And then you cycle past a restaurant and you see three mopeds parked outside. So they're all in there collecting their order and think, oh, well, that's odd. As a cyclist, you know, fair play to the mopeds. They just want to get some work. It's the allocation that seems to be very one-sided at the moment. 80% of our careers for cyclists, on average they work 15 hours per week. It's not a significant um, income stream for them relative to what they do elsewhere. So 85% will use it as a supplementary income stream to doing something else. It's just interesting the way they portray figures, like 80% of our riders are cyclists. If you're running a model where you have a huge surplus of riders, because you know only maybe 10 to 20% of them are ever going to work at any one time. Does that mean that 80% of your orders are done by cyclists? No. 85% of our riders have another job. Does that mean 85% of your orders are done by people with another job? They want to promote that they're a carbon-free company, but it's clear that they just want speed and more money and more money, so they've given the jobs to the motorcyclists. Why don't they prioritise those small town little runs and go, right, well, cyclists can have all of those. Hello, um, we're from the Brighton Riders, and we've asked you to sign a permission to end the terrible conditions we work under for you every night. Fair enough. Well, for delivery. For delivery, I was going to say, I don't yeah, actually yeah, do yeah, anything, yeah. but okay, whatever. <laughs> you got a pen? Yeah. There you go. Thank you, man. You're safe. Woo! Who's the man? Just Thank make you, make guys. It. Thank you. Thank you. There was um, kind of a wildcat strike when just riders became so frustrated they just decided to clock off and show Deliveroo like they mean business. Um, and after that, Deliveroo um, actually conceded to one of our demands to freeze recruitment in Brighton and stop flooding the marketplace in Brighton with loads of riders. <laughs> There's a solidarity because union members want to see their terms and conditions raised, but also, yeah, but for the grace of God, go our members. You know, if, if uh, this sort of casualised work becomes more and more common. It's not sustainable, it doesn't give any security, and there's no progress, there's no training, there's no sick pay, there's no pensions. It's all the, all the very things that we as workers have fought so hard for over so many years uh, are, are, being, are being taken away from the people who need it the very most. We don't have the, the steady job that maybe our parents came out, uh, came out into the working world. A lot, of, uh, a lot of jobs like Deliveroo for us are kind of the only jobs that are available and so when those don't pay a living wage or don't give us an opportunity, it's not like there are great other options and so that's why it's so imperative to be able to provide a living wage. Then let's go into baggers and cocktails. What do you think about? Who I am, uh, just like the restaurant. You can, you can. I'll just put those. What? You guys don't even get minimum wage? We're on four pound a drop. Oh, hold on, we're going to tap that. We're going to give you eight pounds. We'll donate it to the yeah. union, that's all right. If they engage with us a lot more, I'm sure we can improve the business model, improve the margins, uh, get food to customers quicker. There's a community building here and there's a common goal, there's a driving force and we can win.